with reaction to all of this is Trump's senior advisor, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, how are you? Hi, Sean. You know, I know your name's been mentioned for press secretary, and I know the media got all upset that Donald Trump took his family out to dinner three seconds away from Trump Tower one night, and they didn't have the press pool notified. Is it time that maybe we reconsider the conventional way presidents deal with the press in light of all the, the bias and collusion we've discovered? Well, apart from the protective press pool question structurally, I think you're going to have a very unconventional presidency in Donald Trump because he's unconventional. He starts out as an outsider, non-politician who's accustomed to building things, fixing things, delivering, producing. He's, he's a guy who produces results, and that's what people want. Now, I think many in the press, Sean, are still in campaign mode. They're scratching their heads, figuring, figuring out how to stop this guy from becoming president or from forming a cabinet in his likeness or from actually doing things, a flurry of activity in the first 100 days, which may in fact undo some of the legacy of, of their favorite president, President Obama. And they need to get over that. You know, you and I have talked about the snowflakes and the safe spaces on campus, but I think for some in the media, they still, the questions I get, very hostile, the presumptive negativity about him, under the guise of fair coverage or balanced coverage is not true. You know, they, 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 just, they never they never prepared themselves for this possibility. They never prepared themselves the viewers or the readers that this guy could actually win. I mean, even up until late election night, they were all convinced they they knew the outcome and they were all wrong. Um, I'm a little bit tired, though. I mean, this is outright collusion, giving questions, seeking questions from the DNC allowing editing opportunities. Did the New York Times ever allow the Trump campaign to edit a story, look at a story before it was published? Because they've interviewed me a lot over the years. They, they never gave me that opportunity. No, the New York Times this year uh, wrote a scathing editorial the day before the first debate out of Hofstra University. So I guess maybe September 25th or so, they wrote an editorial endorsing Hillary Clinton, basically saying why Donald Trump could not, should not, and would not be president had a separate article about all the mis mistruths that he's told, even though Hillary Clinton had been under a cloud of corruption for I don't know how long because of the mistruths she has told. And so we don't expect, you know, we don't expect them to fall in love with him or to fall in line, but they do have a responsibility to get it right. Yeah. And the one thing that happened with Donald Trump, Sean, that's different from what happened with the Bushes or Reagan or other Republican presidents is that in his case, you had journalists going on cable TV, network TV, and in print saying the following. I, I have to suspend all standards of objective journalism because of this mm. guy. I can't even cover him the way I would cover a regular person because he's not a regular person. I mean, think about that for a it's moment. So, it's, look, it's, I, journalism is dead, Kellyanne. It doesn't exist. Well, and they shouldn't I be given right the access. I sat both meetings. The, yeah. the one today at the New York Times, which is on the record, and the one yesterday here in Trump Tower with the network executives. And oh, anchors, I heard that was a classic. Which five people from Fox News. You did. And, you know, I do think I they're, wish I was there. they're trying. Pardon? I wish I was there for that beatdown that I heard happen. Well, a, a little bit of that. But mostly it was meant to be in the spirit of, okay, let's try to find a little bit of detente here so that we at least get some kind of fair-handed coverage during the transition and, of course, after he's sworn in right, as president. Me... But Mr. Trump did take the opportunity to tell them essentially that he, I mean, my words now, but he's the one who understood America, attracted America, 100%. and will now govern America. Well, they were, look already post-election. They were wrong on Steve Bannon. They were wrong on uh, Jeff Sessions, wrong on, on uh, Lieutenant General Flynn. I have one question. My email has been blowing up over the speculation that Governor Mitt Romney, who met with Donald Trump, might get the Secretary of State position. And a lot of people are beyond mystified, considering all the horrible things and the effort that he l helped lead to, to smear and hurt Donald Trump. And also a lot of people are asking me, what are you going to do? Can you comment on both of those things? Because a lot of people think you Governor deserve Romney. a big position, like me. Well, thank you. That's very kind. I've been offered a big position. But, um, Sean, the fact is that I'm here to support the president-elect and the vice president-elect, both men whom I know and admire greatly, uh, however they need me right now in the transition. I told them as recently as an hour ago, don't worry about me. All that will come together. But uh, in terms of Governor Romney, 
I think the Secretary of State position is such that, and all the cabinet positions, you have to be qualified and capable, number one. Number two, you have to be loyal to what President-elect Trump has said his vision of the world and his agenda is for those so, first 100 so days So if you call so. him a fraud and a huckster and, and whatever else, I mean, remember that speech he gave, it was horrible, just awful. Well, and I, I just want to say, I just want to say g generally, apart from Governor Romney, that there were a lot of never Trumpers who were never Trump up until the last moment. Go read their Twitter feeds. Go pull the tape of what they were saying on TV cameras and in print in different places. They didn't think he would win and they wanted to pile on. Instead of helping the nominee of their party, they piled on. And in terms of a diverse cabinet, I'm all for diversity, but I think maybe one never Trumper is enough. So let's not get two, three, five in there. That would be my polite, uh, would be my polite suggestion. But at the same time, I think. Uh, Donald Trump is somebody who commands loyalty and shows loyalty to those around him, but he's mostly loyal to the American people and the ideas that he ran on. Well, um, my so email is running to fill that cabinet. Uh, about Pardon? 100 to 1 against, and, and people are mad about that he's even considering it, if he really is. I don't know if he really is. Well, look, that position has not been filled. I want to tell you very frankly, there are a number of candidates in line for that particular okay. position, Secretary of State. And I do hope the job description of Secretary of State is a little bit different from what we've seen from Clinton and Kerry, for example. You don't need to go fly around the world right. to be an effective Secretary of State. Kissinger and Schultz, they stuck closer to home serving the president. That would be my, that would be my model. All right, but I want to know what your position is the next time you're on, because you obviously played a big role for the president-elect. Uh, You'll be the first to know. All right, thanks, Kellyanne. Good